is my DIY aluminium canopy and in this video we'll be giving you an overview of the design, the construction and everything that's inside. Everything that you see on this canopy was designed in CAD well before I started fabricating and that allowed me to get the layout just right and incorporate all the features that I wanted to. Now there's a whole build series on this canopy and we go into detail on just about everything so I'd urge you to go check out the links in the description below if you want to see more of it. In this video though, we're going to keep it pretty high level. So let's look at the canopy construction and the outside of the canopy first. I enlisted the help of Justin and his CNC press break from Aylet Custom Fabrication and I went up to use his workshop for the weekend to get the canopy built. The canopy is constructed from 3mm aluminium sheet which was cut on Justin's CNC plasma table before getting folded in his CNC press break. The subframe is constructed out of aluminium unistrut which allows everything to be mounted quite easily. This canopy is fixed to the tray with 4M12s with oversized washers one on each corner, and yes, I can categorically say that it's not going anywhere. I roughed up the aluminium and I shipped it off to my mate Shannon who painted it in Valspar for me. There is a detailed video on the manufacture of the canopy which I've included in the description below. This is a completely custom canopy and I've profiled it to the headboard of my tray. Now, there are a bunch of canopies that I could have fit on the car out on the market, but personally, I don't think any of them suit the shape of the 40 series. This part's a tray and it's a custom profile I did early days to suit the car. We designed the canopy to match that exactly, which I am really stoked about because I think it looks really cool. We're taking a quick break from this canopy walk around for a really exciting announcement. The team at Design and Build has been working really hard behind the scenes to launch a brand new website with new merchandise to commemorate the completion of this canopy. You might be wondering why it's taken so long to launch merchandise for the channel, and it's a simple one really. We wanted to test this stuff out for ourselves. You've probably seen us wearing it for the past 12 months or so on the channel, and we're really happy with it, so the time is right to offer it to you all. As you can probably imagine, making this sort of content costs a lot of money and there's no way no one we're making our money back at the moment. We're not necessarily looking to do that either. We really do love doing this stuff and we'd be doing it anyway with or without a YouTube channel. However, that said, with the support of you all, we'll be able to go bigger in the future and tackle more ambitious builds. So if you'd like to support the channel, grab yourself a t-shirt, a work shirt, a hoodie or some stickers from our newly launched website www.designandbuilt.com.au I cannot thank you enough for all the support and thanks in advance for helping us to grow the channel. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the canopy walk around. Now onto the outside of the canopy. One of the design features of this canopy is that the door seals are integrated into the door as opposed to on the canopy. This allows for a completely flat floor and you don't have to put that 50 mil return on which you see in most canopies out there on the market. And that makes it a lot more challenging to mount things like drawers. And generally you'll have to put a false floor in to mount something like a drawer, which adds weight and then is just a waste of space. Another one is if you have the seals mounted on the canopy, there's more of a likelihood that you damage them when you're putting things in and out of the canopy. Having the seals on the door really solves both these issues with no downsides. So I do think it's a good design. So this canopy features dual latches, one on each side, which pulls directly down to the canopy itself and minimizes the compliance in comparison to other designs. You can see the uni strut running throughout the whole canopy and it's so easy to fasten accessories to this stuff. You just use a spring nut and a bolt. Personally, I think it's awesome and it saves you from having to use a bunch of nut certs. It's also great for concealing wires and I have wires running through all my uni strut. Onto the back of my canopy now, and we are looking at a custom triple jerry holder, which I designed. Now this canopy is set up for remote touring, so I've got an extra 60 liters of fuel capacity on the back here, in addition to the 200 that I have on board. So it's 260 all up, which is pretty good. That probably gives you a range of 100 Ks total if you're driving your Barra at wide open throttle like I do. <laughs> Over to the other side now, and we're looking at my spare tire carrier. Now that's bolted through the uni strut with eight M12s, and I can categorically say that this one's not going anywhere as well. If you want to see more detail on either of these, check out my accessories video, link in the description below. On the roof of the canopy now, and I've welded on this uni strut as a roof rack. I use this to mount my rooftop tent. My canopy has jack off points. All you need to do is undo those four bolts I was talking about, one Anderson, and then you can take off the whole canopy. That's a wrap on the exterior. Let's have a look at the interior now, starting with the driver's side. We have a triple drawer set on this side, consisting of a fridge freezer drawer up at the front, 
a charge drawer in the middle, and then just a regular drawer at the back. Now this is made out of 3mm aluminium, and there is a detailed build video on my channel, link in the description below. This is a design that I came up with on CAD before cutting it out on our CNC plasma table and then sticking it together with a TIG. At the front, we have this Engel 30 liter fridge freezer drawer. I'm not affiliated with Engel at all, but I did use it for a month on the road as a freezer and there were no issues with it. So I think it's really good so far. In the middle here, we have this custom charger drawer which can remain powered while it's opened or closed. Now this is my design and I haven't seen anything else like it, but let me tell you right now, it has been an absolute game changer for me because I take so much camera gear on the road with me to film for YouTube. This ensures that all my camera gear stays fully charged all the time, and I don't miss out on any of those critical shots. We've got 12 and 240 volt to the drawer, and we've got a general power outlet on one side, and then four USB chargers on the other. Now on the back here, we have a regular drawer, and it's full of all my King Chrome tools, and they're actually a channel sponsor. Shout out to those guys. These tools have got me out of some hairy situations thus far, and you'll know that if you've been following along on my channel. I can put four water jerrys across the back of my canopy in this space here. Up top, I've got this water pump, which just sucks straight from the jerrys. And I've got a coiled up hose with a nozzle as well. It's a really simple setup, but I think it works really well. Just for tasks like washing the dishes and that sort of stuff, it makes life a whole lot easier. I use the top of these drawers for storage and I've got marine carpet on here, which makes it really easy to slide bags in and out. I've also got lips and tie down points around the edge. So the bags don't go too far if they're bouncing about on rough terrain. Over to to the canopy door now and we've got two led strip lights up here which can either be red or white and then tucked away on the inside of the door is this portable projector screen a few people have asked me how does this go in the wind and it actually goes really well there's a frame here at the back and you can pull the drawer up against it, tie it back to this drawer if it's really windy. We've been quite successful watching movies on a windy night. Onto the passenger side now, and we'll start with the camp kitchen pantry combo. This kitchen is made from aluminium and stainless steel, which was cut on our plasma table, folded by hand in the pan break, and welded together by me with a TIG. Let's start with the camp pantry. We have three shelves which are adjustable via bolt holes. We've got elastic string on the sides to make sure everything gets held in. We've got a front section for taller items like sauce bottles. And then we've got the camp kitchen on this side and let's open that up right now. This is my double slide out cooker kitchen combo. This is my twin 2400 watt Westinghouse induction cooker. If you want to see the reasoning why I chose to go induction, Make sure you check out the kitchen build video because I cover it there pretty comprehensively. And this is the kitchen portion of it. This has stainless steel tops with a split lid design. So the idea is if you want to get something out, you can just push everything to one side and then only open one side of the lid. There are two shelves above it. And this bottom one here is designed pretty much specifically for canned storage. You can get about two slabs in there. So the top shelf here is just for food and that's where I've been keeping all my perishables and bulkier items. Now you notice everything here and on the other side as well has handles. These handles are something that can be retrofit to your canopy fit out as well. And all you need to do is drill a couple of holes in each of the drawer slides. We do different lengths to suit pretty much every drawer set and you can pick them up on lcs4x4.com.au. So when I designed this, I wanted the kitchen setup to be fast and you can open the canopy and pull it out and turn it on within 12 seconds, which is pretty quick in my opinion. Now there were a lot of things that I considered to come up with a design like this and I go into the detail on the kitchen build video on my channel and the link to that is in the description below if you're interested. I was really surprised on the interest we had in this camp kitchen design. So we're going to start making these for consumers. We're just refining a few little bits to make sure they suit some of the other canopies on the market. If you're interested, email workshop at lcs4x4.com.au. Over on this side, I've got my Bushman's 85 litre fridge and a custom fridge cage that I designed myself to mount it in. I've already gone through this in a couple of my other videos, but basically these are 30 kilos. Chest fridge with a drop down slide is about 60 kilos so it's double the weight of this and this is much more convenient as well so in my opinion it's a no-brainer i'll be sticking with the vertical fridge from now on to make sure the food doesn't move about i just use containers when i'm on the road which is a pretty simple solution on the front of the fridge i have this canvas organizer which is really really handy for storing miscellaneous items and it's also really good for concealing your meat cleaver at the front of the canopy in that gap i've got my washing and drying up tub 
I purposely didn't build cutouts into my kitchen for these because I do think it's an inefficient use of space. Got a couple of exciting announcements. If you've been following my videos for a while, you might be starting to think that I really do love design. So much so, in fact, that I've started to take on custom design work. I'll be specializing, but not limited to automotive design. So things like this canopy fit out, the canopy itself, and then all the other parts you've seen me design on the car. If you have a specific design problem and you'd like something custom to suit your needs, then make sure you check out my website, www.designandbuilt.com.au. Now for a brief rundown on the 12 volt system we have in this canopy. At the heart of it, there are two Baintec 110 amp hour batteries, so 220 amp hours of lithium all up. I've got a 3000 watt iTech World inverter mounted to the headboard, which powers the 240 volt side of things. That consists of two general power outlets and the induction cooker. To run the 12 volt side of things, I've just got a fuse and a relay block up on the headboard there. I'm not convinced at all that you need a fancy digital system like Red Vision. The advantages of running something like this is is that it's lighter, cheaper, simpler, and if something does happen to go wrong, it's really easy to diagnose and fix it as well. Charging all this is a Red Arc 50 amp DC-DC charger, which is mounted up onto the headboard, which runs off the alternator. I've already covered this in my 12 volt video, but I do think solar is pointless when you're running induction on a canopy and you have limited real estate available on the roof for panels. So I'm not running solar panels at all. I have a mini control panel here with a rocker switch for my sick neons on the headboard, which lights up my logo. And then I have another one which turns these USBs and 12 volt outs on and off. This is my 12 volt control panel over here. And at the top, I have my Victron battery monitor. Now there's a screen built into my canopy and then there's an app as well, which gives you even more detail more detail than you actually need. I think it's a really good unit and it's really good bang for buck. Below I've got two rocker switches which turn my internal lights on and off. And then I've got another one here which powers the USBs. I've got a remote on off switch for my inverter below. And then at the bottom here, I've got a GPO. On the headboard, I've got an isolator for my induction stove. I've also got two rocker switches for each of my fridges. Brief overview of my 12 volt system and I've got a very detailed video on my channel if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description below. One thing to keep in mind about this canopy and canopy fit out was the complete design and build was done in about eight weeks outside my working hours. We had a hard deadline to finish this thing off so I could make it on tour, which is going to be an upcoming travel series which comes out on the channel. I can guarantee you that I used every available second of that eight weeks, but there were a few things that I didn't do because I just didn't have the time and it's too late to do it now because I wanted to integrate some things in. So what does that mean? It means you're going to have to keep an eye out for V2. I just want to give a huge shout out to all my mates and I could not have done this without their help. There was someone in my shed pretty much every night for eight weeks. And uh, yeah, we just crunched it out and got it done. Shout pizza and beers and they will come. Before we close out this canopy video, I'd just like to remind the viewers of something. Two years ago, I was designing parts out of sheet metal which couldn't be made. I was learning how to TIG weld aluminium. Now we are here and it is not perfect by any means, but I've come a long way in the span of two years. And nothing has happened overnight. I've had to work really hard at my design and fabrication skills, but I am really really proud of how far I've come. And you might be wondering why I'm saying this. To all you viewers at home, you can do this as well. So what are you waiting for? Get out in your shed and give it a crack. Bad news is that this brings us to the end of the canopy series. The good news is that I've actually gone and tested this canopy and the fit out for a month on the road. So the next series on the channel will be our attempt to cross one of the most remote tracks in Australia, the Canning Stock Route. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go to plan, but I'm just going to leave you with some images from the upcoming trip series. If you'd like to see the trip and how the canopy fares in the wilderness, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. <laughs>